You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. So you may on Twitter the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Route 65. So yeah, we're going to be going ahead and exploring uh, some of the uh, other routes and such. They're, they're not very long from what I've heard. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. Let's do... Let's do confide with Flynn. All right. I frowned at myself as my thumb pad hovers over Flynn's contact image on the Messenger app. I got Gorgonzola at the mini market in Peyton. Well, that's some timing. I honestly have no idea what this message means. Instinctively, I try to respond with something jabby. I'm sorry, Flynn. I'm sure they have a cream for that. <laughs> ha! After hitting send, I'm not too sure that was the right move. Flynn rarely responds whenever I text him, and that probably didn't boost my odds. Looking out the bus window, I can see that we're approaching Carl's stop. It's a type of salad, you musky fuck. Oh. I thought it was a cheese. Whatever. Why are you texting me about salad? As the bus turns into onto the neighborhood road, I scoot o I scoot over some, speaking up uh, speaking up to get Carl's attention. So I'm gonna get off with you here, okay? Carl just continues staring at his blank screen for a second before blinking and looking back at me. Are you sure? That might be pretty messy, and Karen watching might give me performance anxiety. Carl stares deadpan at me. I rest my forehead into my paw and groan, though I end up snickering a bit. The bus comes to a stop. Carl! <clears throat> Carl, this is where you get off! Uh, Chase wants to get off, too. Uh, the bus. You have a note from your folks? Shit. I look back to Carl, and he gives me a look of understanding. He unslings his backpack from his shoulder, rifling through it. The car looks up at me briefly, mouthing one word. Stall. Tell a joke. Uh, I do. I make a motion of holding something up behind the seat. Carl seems to have found a pen and notepad and is scribbling hastily. So, uh, Karen, how do you get a North, uh, North Mountain State grad off your property? Karen gives me a rather dubious look, her silver eyes gazing me gay. Her silver, her silver gaze eyeing me up. You pay him for the pizza? The old fox lets out a huff that is half exasperated, half amused. What in the hell? <laughs> Beware, Chase. My nephew from NMS is a six foot nine played rugby. He might not take too kindly to that. Hey, Carl was the one who told it to me. Carl puts on a show of giving me a slightly narrowed look before slugging my shoulder. I don't have nearly the same level of cushion there as the ram, so even if it's for show, it still hurts. I feel something flutter onto my lap. As I pick it up, I see that Carl has forged a note with my mother's signature style near perfectly. As much as the ram whinges about his lack of skill, his penmanship and art are not half bad. I give him a discreet, grateful look as we get up and move to the next to the exit bus. Carl hops off first, his hooves making an audible clop noise upon the aged asphalt. However, as I move to hand my note to Karen, her calloused hands grasp my wrists instead of the note. I'm not that deaf and dumb, kitty. I've been doing this job well for a long while. She relinquishes my wrist, the note fluttering to the ground. I can feel Carl staring nervously at us from the road. You got an awful comedic timing, Chase, but it was a good joke, and I'll tell my nephew that one myself. She shifts some in her large driver's seat, the cadence of her voice changing some as she looks to the back of the bus. I saw you back there, puffy-eyed and trembling. You afraid of something at home? I know how the I know how the people around here can be. She pauses, bending down to pick up the dropped note before tossing it into the bus's, bus's trash bucket. Freeze, feeling the tips of my ears burn rosy, burn rosy as today's endless cavalcade of embarrassment. At today's endless cavalcade of embarrassment. Especially with kids. I'm not sure what she means by that. Definitely I'm not sure what to say. I look back at Carl. He's averting his gaze now, his paws deep in his hoodie pockets. Alright, alright, I get it. Nobody trusts the hick bus driver to know what it's like to be a kid these days. Look, run along now. Sorry for, you know, grabbing you. I'm used to them shit staring me and Clint doing that and getting me in trouble. I try hard and force a smile. Oh, uh, thanks. I appreciate your concern and all. Or, yeah, they are pretty shitty. Hey, language kiddo. Sorry. Also, tell Carl's flies down. It's like a damn fool. I see Carl stiffen, quickly reaching down and fumbling with his zipper. His neon orange Superwolf boxer is visible through his fly. Karen just sighs. I feel my phone vibrate within my pocket. See squirts on Monday. I step off the bus beside Carl and door shut behind me. Karen heading back toward the, toward the freeway. It gets dark so much earlier now that the summer is over. Uh, let's see. What do we have? Let's skip forward a bit. Let's, yeah, let's skip forward a little bit. I think this is all just normal dialogue. 
Är det henne? Är det henne? Är det henne? Let's do that. Okay. All right, y'all. Let's see what in his in store. Oh, plan. Okay. Okay. All right. I follow, pulling out my phone. I was texting my aunt. Miss sent to you. Oh. I don't know. I was just grabbing what I needed. Uh, Fifteen bucks, maybe. That's a lot for one of these kinds of games, especially just for clothing. Well, like, the luchador mask I wanted was one of the premium items, so it costed the most. Everything else was dirt cheap. So, can I talk to you about something? Every single girl in that game uses the same hair. The long, curly, blonde one that costs like a dollar. What? At least they at least they say they're girls. I'm just trying to be unique. Otherwise, what's the point? It's a social role-playing game. Why was getting in, why was getting ignored? So my parents caught me looking at gay porn this morning, and I don't know what to do. Jesus fucking Christ, Chase. I haven't told anyone else yet. I don't know what to do. I uh, actually have another account with a character that is more normal looking. I made him after you left me last night. What the fucking hell made you pick made you pick me to drop this bullshit on? Has someone t has someone told you something? He's like this big primate looking dude with burn scars everywhere in this kind of albino we face. God, I don't know, and no, no one has told me anything. I had I had the idea for the character sort of based off a dream I had once. How did your parents take it? Anyway, I went to a lot of the in-game hotspots at first, so a lot of the stuff you and I saw when we were messing around. I don't know, kind of badly, I think? I didn't stick around. Had to catch the bus. It's sort of like you said, that most of the people there are just middle-aged housewives who can barely type a sentence. I just don't want to go home right now. But then I sort of went off-grid, I guess you'd call it. Like the spots that aren't advertised on Destination Finder. I started finding a lot of weird shit. Like, weirder than the shit we were making ironically, yeah? I'm unloading freight tonight. I tell you to call tell you to call Jazz, and she's better with this sort of shit, but I can't get a hold of her either. And there were these places which looked like more real life houses, uh, not the usual fantasy exotic stuff. Shit, should I check go check up on her? Just people living in virtual families in these boring ass looking homes, complete with framed photos of screenshots of their characters. I was going to after work. Her tit dirt parents have been cunty as of late. You can pay. You can if you want, but doubt your pansy self can handle can handle Jer if he's there. I got the impression that a lot of them were like foreign. I don't care if him and Clint are there. I walked into this one flat with these two horse ladies in it. Look, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you this, but Leo was going to do this party thing tonight. You should go too, or not? I don't care. They had decorations of Middle Eastern words everywhere, but they seemed normal enough. They had a TV item which just displayed a slideshow of Photoshop photos with them with a baby. A party? Not an echo, right? What is it, for the election? When I started exploring the house, I ended up walking to this nursery room and they got really pissy. It's for the Day of the Dead. That's today. A bunch of jocks and townie types are going to be there. Route 65 at Parsons Manufacturing. I thought about trolling, you know, and writing, I eat their baby and I hop it up and down in the crib, but I don't know. Leo didn't mention it when I saw him. You going? It just felt like this weird mix of awkward and sad. I just, I just said I'll be working, and when I get off, I'm heading to Jasmine's. Fucking to do, school paper boy. Uh, Chase, I was just curious. Fuck you. Uh, are you listening? Carl is standing in front of me with a concerned expression on his face. It takes me a moment to respond. Yeah, just uh, texting Flynn. He's actually responding to you? Yeah, <laughs> I know. I look up the street. Carl's house sitting in its amber glowing glory atop the hill slope. Apparently there's a party happening tonight. Carl raises an inquisitive brow. Like, here or in general? I'm not sure what you mean by in general, but yeah, around here. Second, y'all. Water time. Alright, y'all, and we are back. Let's jump back into it, shall we? Okay. My phone buzzes in my grip. You're welcome. I gotta go. Try not to suck too much cock on your way there. Ah, so it begins. That's good advice from Flynn. I don't know if you're going to hold out the whole way through. Glancing over with a start, I realize that Carl is leering over my shoulder, squinting at my phone. Christ! I exhale, turning my phone screen off. Yeah, I'll try my best. Carl lets out a brief, breathy bit of laughter before pulling out his phone. Lying to your parents' time? Yep, your fault too. What should I say? Uh, I'll leave it. 
Uh, if you're hanging out at Leah's house? Uh, Carl texts something onto his phone before moving along in the opposite direction we were walking before. I'm honestly surprised he accepted. His social anxiety is pretty bad at school. Maybe it's just that kind of night. I follow suit and walk alongside Carl. Can't wait till I get my license in my car. You mentioned that already, yeah? Route 65 is like three miles away. You can get your fetlocks toned and ready for the dance floor, though. I see Carl's posture stiffen some of that prospect, his bright green eyes looking at the asphalt beneath us. You don't actually think there's gonna be dancing, is there? Like the movies and shit? I shrug. Something I've been doing a lot this night. Growing up in a town with less than 60 people has made what seems like a conventional teenage experience on TV seem utterly foreign. The closest our group of friends had had to such were birthday parties to just us six and our folks. Leo's dad let us drink a can of beer once. I always imagined high school parties were just a bunch of kids sitting on couches and smoking weed. But this is Echo, so... No, uh, meth? Do you think Leo would go to a party where everyone smoked meth? I didn't think Leo would go to a party and not tell us. I pause, dipping my paws into my pockets. I wonder if Leo thinks we're not cool. Carl actually looks, to, turns to look at me, then quickly averts his gaze to the ground. Dude! I think that after all the shit we've been through, that wouldn't matter. A serious statement from him takes me off guard, and I feel instantly guilty for broaching that topic. I nod solemnly, another long pause drifting between us. Yeah. Carl tells me more about 3D Virtue Chat and some girls he met on there as we walk. Girls being stayed with quotation fingers each time. I had tried talking with some guys online myself, though, like Carl never, like Carl never with any real identity. Never with my real identity. Ugh. I remember I was feeling lonely two months ago and posted a personal MM ad on the Peyton List website. 18 year old Otter here looking for friend mentor was the tagline. I included a cropped and photoshopped picture of myself at the Peyton Rec Center pool, my face blurred. Since I went through pu puberty a couple years ago, I was pretty sure I could pass for 18 if my face was hidden. I was wrong. My post was taken down and I got a few emails from administrators a asking all sorts of questions. It really hasn't been my best, best, best past few months. <sighs> Eventually we reached Parsons Building, an establishment that, clo that closed many of, many of my lifetimes ago from the looks of it. About ten or so cars and motorcycles are parked alongside the building, and neon blue light emanates from the inside. The thump of bass is palpable even out here on the road. Actually, I'll skip forward just a little bit. Let's see what we got. Who was it? Was it? Oh, answer from his mom. Yeah. No. A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. A little bit at a time. Jeez. So. I don't know if I use that. I don't know if I used that picture before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the bad place. The bad place. Let's see. All right. We had to call TJ's mom. You're the one with the phone that can get pretty good signal pretty much anywhere, so I tried yours. I'm sorry, I just got signal. Please be okay, dude. Oh, Carl. I'm sorry, I just got signal. Please be okay, dude. It's fine now. TJ's getting picked up. I'm here with Leo. I hear the sound of someone fiddling with a stereo and auxiliary cord on the factory floor. Some arguing about music choices ensues. It seems that some people are still around for the party, after all. So, uh, what all do you remember out of curiosity? I don't have amnesia, so relax, whatever your name is. Hey, I felt the back of your head, Pachika. You've got a wealth the size of a goose egg. I reach up and run my fingers over my scalp, the bump rather prominent. Alright, well... Regale him with the events of the night of the TJ's bullying. Those towny shits were saying you were pushers trying to harass Heather for some debts. Fucking what? Yeah, I don't know, Otter. Fuck. I kept calling for you. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Alright, I'm going to skip ahead in the next video, so we'll see how much more we have. So, anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye